Traveling as a gamer can be difficult. It's not like you can take your desktop and hop onto a plane and go wherever you need to go without risking any sort of damage. And the same thing can be said for the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. The S you can kind of get away with it, I have at least. And whenever I travel for long or extended periods of time, usually for work or editing or production or whatever it may be, I'm looking for a way to have that gaming, that full gaming experience on the go. This is where the challenge really comes into play because technically you can take handhelds with you, you can take your Steam Deck, you can take your Nintendo Switch and have that, but sometimes you just wanna plug into something and just have that full experience. Hotel televisions tend to have ridiculously horrible input latency and sometimes it's just a crappy experience overall. And the same thing could be said for Airbnbs that you're staying in you might not have the best experience because the owner of the Airbnb might not have the best television for your gaming experience. This is where today's sponsor comes into play. Our Zopa, they make an array of monitors and mainly specifically portable monitors. In this instance, we're talking about their G1 model, which is a 144 Hertz, 1080p portable monitor. And now I personally didn't really think that this was something that I needed. It is something that I toyed with in the past and I've seen online, I've seen different reviews talking about different models, but this one, intrigued me more than anything else because of the 144 hertz refresh rate when this finally came in the mail i was ridiculously excited to just pop it open and see what was inside because i'd done a lot of research and it seemed like this was going to be a monitor that i would enjoy myself seeing as how i travel for work and want to game as i go when i popped open the packaging the monitor was literally right there alongside with a bunch of cables that they included which i highly appreciate because one of them is really off and one of them is not very common Obviously, there is the USB-A to USB-C. That's very common. And then there's also the USB-C to USB-C. Again, very common. But mini HDMI to HDMI, not so common. They also threw in a power adapter to power the whole thing, which again, I can highly appreciate to include everything you need. I also wanted to see if there was something else in the packaging, and that was not the case. When I was taking out the monitor, the first thing that I noticed was the leather case that protects the monitor itself. This is awesome because as you travel, you want to make sure that you protect your electronics. On the front, there's a little Arzo Zopa logo on the case and there's also a little Arzopa logo on the bottom of the monitor as well. It's not overpowering or anything like that. I did enjoy the peeling process of this, but listen. It wasn't the most satisfying peel at all, but I, I can appreciate it for what it was. So when you're looking at the monitor itself, if you look at the left-hand side, you're going to see a mini HDMI port and two USB-C ports. The cool thing about these USB-C ports though, is that they're able to receive and give power. So if you can plug this into a console or a handheld that provides enough juice to power the monitor itself, then you're good to go. You don't really have to worry about the power adapter for this monitor. If you look on the right, right hand side there is a power button as well as a return button it's multifunctional and then there's also a little wheel that you can use to navigate through the ui for the monitor itself and finally there is a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio input for headphones essentially on the bottom side there is two down firing speakers that allow for stereo and there's some things that I've got to say about that, but I'll save that for later on in the video when I talk about audio. One thing that had me a little bit concerned was actually the magnetic case that comes with the monitor itself. It's supposed to be there to essentially be a stand that you can use to prop up the monitor as you're gaming on the go. And that definitely left me a little bit concerned because of how wobbly it was. Thankfully, our Zopa did also send a stand that they sell online to prop up the monitor so that you have something that's a little bit more secure and a little bit more stable to hold the monitor as you're gaming and frankly that is really the only way that I felt comfortable testing out the monitor because I was afraid that it was going to fall and break because of the flimsy case that's there to hold and act as a stand. The first thing that comes to mind for me personally is how I can integrate this monitor into my workflow. Now I travel a lot for work so having something that I can connect to my laptop in order to work on the go makes a lot of sense especially when you're editing video or editing photo or just having something that you can go ahead and use. I, for one, don't really like the way that the color gamut is on this 
exact screen, but for most gamers, this probably isn't going to be the top priority for you. There's two things that I looked at when actually testing out this monitor from a gamer's perspective. One was the refresh rate and whether or not this was something that was compatible with a lot of handhelds as well as consoles that I have. And two, how does this perform in a highly lit room? Now, most of the time, whenever I game in a dark room like this, I don't really have to worry about reflecting lights on the monitor or screen itself, but this is something that if you're going to be using it on a portable setting, then you need to go ahead and make sure that it can handle all sorts of lighting scenarios. So I put this in my living room downstairs to go ahead and see if I can get the worst lighting possible and see how the monitor would perform. Because of the matte finish, it actually came out really nice. I was very impressed with how the colors were presented and how well it handled the diffusion of light that was coming in from a sunlit room. The main things that I wanted to test out with this portable monitor were the Steam Deck and the Nintendo Switch. I also threw in the Xbox Series S because technically this is something that I have taken with me while I traveled either for work or leisure or whatever it may be. And I have wanted to have a better experience while on the go. When I hooked up the Xbox Series S to the monitor, I was actually really surprised that I could plug in the USB-A to USB-C on the Xbox Series S and that could provide enough power to actually power on the monitor, which is great because that's one less thing that you have to worry about if you're traveling with this as your main go-to for your gaming experience. Experience. I was a little bit saddened by the fact though that I couldn't get 144 hertz refresh rate out of the Xbox Series S. I couldn't hit 120 frames. I did try this with Ori and the Will of the Wisps because I do know that there are two modes that you can use. You can use the 1080 at 120 frames per second or you can do 4K at 60. So I tried it at 1080 and although it was pumping out the 120 frames, they were actually being put into the monitor itself. The Xbox Series S didn't register that as a capable monitor to receive 120 frames per second, which is a little bit of a shame because I do think that the Xbox Series S is a formidable way of having a full gaming experience on the go. The next thing that I tested out was the Nintendo Switch. And to my surprise, the monitor itself powered the Nintendo Switch once it was connected. So I literally plugged it into the body, took out the Joy-Cons and I started gaming. I didn't really experience any issues at all whatsoever. Obviously it being a 144 Hertz monitor, you don't really need that to play the Nintendo Switch on the go since the Nintendo Switch can barely do 60 frames per second when it comes to some of the games. But regardless, I do appreciate the fact that how easy it is to plug and play when it comes to the Nintendo Switch. If you're traveling with the Nintendo Switch, you might not want to take your dock with you as you go out and about. So this is a nice medium when it comes to all of that stuff. I'm just glad that I could go ahead and use this easily with the monitor itself. As I'm sure you can imagine, when I was testing out the Steam Deck with this monitor, everything pretty much worked seamlessly. I didn't have to worry about any sort of cables or anything like that. And I could connect a USB-C cable from the Steam Deck straight into the monitor and that could provide enough power to power the monitor itself. Obviously, I don't recommend that because your battery is going to die relatively quickly. But regardless, it's still cool that that's an option, that that's something that you can go ahead and do with this monitor. I was able to hit 144 frames per second when I was testing out several 2D titles. For example, I was testing out Hollow Knight and 144 frames easily, man. I didn't have anything to worry about when it comes to that. Now, when I was testing out 3D titles like Horizon Zero Dawn, I was hitting 55-ish to 65-ish frames per second, but regardless, it was still smooth gameplay. It may be in part because of Cryo Utilities 2.0. If you're interested in installing that, check that out over here. But regardless, it was still a seamless experience and I was able to experience gaming on the go. Obviously, if you get a controller, if you get the dock and you plug everything and you hook it up into the wall, you're able to have that experience without any issues at all whatsoever. And frankly, if you're interested in having a 144 hertz refresh rate monitor on the go, this might be the best use case scenario. Because of what happened with the Xbox Series S, I wanted to test out the PlayStation 5 to see if that would register as a 144 hertz refresh rate monitor that could allow the PlayStation 5 to output 120 frames per second. Now, when it came down to it, it was literally plug and play. The PlayStation registered that this was a new monitor that wasn't connected to it before it was turned off. So obviously I had to put in all of the settings, adjust the brightness, HDR, and so on and so forth. But regardless, everything worked well. If you have a game that supports 120 frames frames per second on the PlayStation 5, it was able to output that onto the monitor. So I didn't have to worry about it. Now, obviously the PlayStation 5 is not the most portable console out there. So I, I personally would not recommend taking your PlayStation 5 and traveling with it by any means, but it's still nice that you're able to go ahead and do that, which is, I don't know, it's just a nice to have.
One of the things that I wanted to test out on this monitor was the input latency. And unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to test that out accurately. And when I looked online, there wasn't any listings or anything like that telling me what the response rate was on this monitor. So the next best thing would be to try out a game, which I did. I tried it out with Hi-Fi Rush. And if you don't know, Hi-Fi Rush is a music action based game that allows for the music to affect your move set and your combos as your character progresses through the game. I tried it out on the the monitor before trying it out on my TV downstairs and I had no issues at all whatsoever. I already know based off of experience that my LG G1 has input latency galore in comparison to my PC monitor upstairs. So this in comparison to the LG G1 is night and day. I had very, very, very little issues playing that game on this monitor in comparison to my TV downstairs. So if I were to guess, I would say that the input latency is maybe like, I don't know, like one to three milliseconds. I mean, it's it's barely noticeable, guys. Like you won't experience too much of an issue when it comes to the refresh rate and the input latency on this monitor. When it comes to audio, it definitely left a lot to be desired. And if you listen to this right here, this is from a shotgun microphone that's roughly three feet away from the monitor itself while I was recording. <laughs> It's not necessarily the best, and yes, it was in an echoey living room, so it, there wasn't any sort of sound treatment or anything like that, but it still left a lot to be desired. So in this instance, I would either get some Bluetooth earbuds or headphones that can hook up to whatever console or handheld you're using to game on, or just go in with a plugged in 3.5 millimeter jack headphones. That way you can get a truly seamless experience. I just don't think that it's worth using the speakers. They're there, they're nice to have, but I would rather go with earbuds or earphones to get a better experience on the go. When I look at this monitor, I see so much potential for me personally, because I can take this on the go, plug this into my laptop and do actual production work on the go. I'm able to edit photos and edit video in a much more comfortable setting. If you know what I'm talking about in terms of production, you know how crucial it is to have a secondary monitor to just move things around and have more space. When it comes to the gaming side of things, I love the ease of use with the Steam Deck. I also love the ease of use with the Nintendo Switch, albeit you're not going to hit the 144 frames, but I digress. That's a whole different conversation entirely. I am a little bit saddened by the fact that the Xbox Series S does not hit that 120 frames per second that I know is possible. I don't know if that's something that is just on Xbox's side, or maybe there's something wrong with the monitor that doesn't actually register the fact that it can hit 120 frames, but I digress. Regardless, if this is something that you see yourself potentially getting, then I highly recommend it. The link's down in the description below if you want to check that out and see for yourself. But if you're interested in getting something for just the Nintendo Switch or even the Xbox Series S given the whole situation with everything, go with the 60 hertz refresh rate monitor. I think you'll be fine with that and it's cheaper than the 144 hertz refresh rate. But if you're looking into getting something that you could plug into your mobile gaming PC or your Steam Deck as you're traveling around, then this is a highly viable option. I definitely recommend it if this is something that you're interested in. Let me know what you think in the comments below and whether or not you would add a portable gaming monitor into your portable gaming setup. And also, if you do have experience with gaming monitors on the go, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you're interested in installing that Cryo Utilities update that I talked about earlier, then click this video over here to get more frames in your Steam Deck. And if you're interested in hearing my thoughts after having the Steam Deck for five months, click this video down here. Until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.